Maring buntag ng inyong tanan. Welcome to our online worship service. Today is our last Sunday of the Easter season. And before I begin my message, let me open to the prayer. Abba Father, we come into your presence this morning, thanking you for giving us a way that we can come together to worship you today. We praise you, Lord, for nothing is impossible when you are in our midst. Thank you for the opportunity to listen to your words of love and encouragement in our life's journey. Please bless the speaking and the listening. All for the glory and honor to your name. In your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Our text for this morning is taken from John 17, verses 1 to 11. This prayer of Jesus took place after Jesus' last supper with his disciples and before he was betrayed and condemned to death, to death on the cross. Yes. Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you give me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I have given you before the world of God. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I give them the words you give me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. For they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer. But we are still in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. The name you give me so that they may be one as we are one. This passage is often called Jesus' High Priestly Prayer. It is deeply moving prayer especially when we realize the scope of this prayer is not only for his disciples, but also for all of us who have been redeemed and reconciled to God. Jesus plainly states what eternal life is. When he used the phrase eternal life, what does it mean? When we can have eternal life or everlasting life. Eternal life is living in a way who we are in Jesus. It means the quality of life in this age and also refers to a future age when the fullness will be enjoyed by those who have faith in Christ those who surrender to God's will and redeem by His blood. The emphasis is on the quality of life the believers are having right now. In Jesus' prayer to the Father, He speaks of three qualities of what eternal life is. First, 
knowing and being known. The word knowing indicates not merely cognitive knowledge, but an experiential kind of knowing. It is a dynamic relationship. God is after our relationship with Him. Eternal life is you and me entering into a relationship, not just any relationship, but a love relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is no relationship without communication, communion, or spending time together. God's intention for humanity is to restore the lost relationship. Prayer is all the ways in which we communicate and deepen our relationship with God. Jesus' example of his praying life Cause the disciple to ask him to teach them how to pray because they own the fantastic result of Christ's ministry, feeding the 5,000, healing sick, and other miracles they witness. Christ often withdraw from the crowd to a solitary place, spend time with God. Jesus has been knowing the Father for all eternity. Before the world existed and his love for the Father overflows, praying involves listening. Listening to his word through the scriptures, the experience of silence is another way of giving up our lives to the one who lies in all of us. Do you know to be known in a way there are no secrets, no more hiding and just pure open knowing? Jesus mentioned about glory in the first of I have brought you glory on earth. Glory is a word that denotes the true nature of God, for there's nothing about him that is tainted or distorted. Jesus shared the Father's glory even before he came to the earth. The glory of God can be seen through his creation, the sun, moon, stars, mountain, trees, flowers, and all the nature around us. Glory also denotes goodness and radiance. As what happened to Moses to come there with God in the mouth on the top of Mount Sinai. God moved to share the glory with humans. Moses said in Exodus 33, 18 to 19, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord in your presence. In Psalms 104 verse 1 it says, O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The second quality is giving and receiving. Creation is the expression of God's generosity towards us. Jesus' death is the ultimate expression of God's generosity to mankind. Giving and receiving is the life that has been going on for all eternity. The moment you give your life to Jesus, the Father gives you and me to Jesus as a gift. You and I are God's gift to Jesus. We belong to Him. Jesus gives us the eternal life where we are shared in His eternal giving and receiving. This also means eternal life 
is a life of giving. We are made to be another's gift of joy through participating in restoring others in Christ's kingdoms. The last quality, unity of love. Jesus concludes this section by praying in John 17 verse 11 that may, they may be one. Oneness and unity can be taken several ways. Being one or being unified can be understood as sharing a common purpose. The oneness Jesus is speaking of strongness within the oneness that exists between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Although Jesus did not mention that here explicitly, love is the very essence of oneness and unity. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 says, And we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, God in Him. In Jesus, we are invited to love and participate in the oneness. We can see three directions of God's love in this prayer that believers are invited to participate in. We are all lovers of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How does one love God? Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It is oneness Jesus has prayed for us to be part of. This is what means to worship the Father, to the Son, and to the Spirit. Full lovers of one another. We see in Jesus how God loves all for his children with a perfect love. As full lovers of God, we are also full lovers of all the brothers and sisters in Christ. Matthew 22 verse 39 And the second commandment is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. We are invited to participate in the very love God has for all His children. Our relationship with one another in and out of the church often falls short of this. But this is Jesus' prayer for us. We can give back when our love fails. We can repent and turn again to receive the love the Father is loving the one you feel with. In this hope, we can love one another today and know our love will grow to completion in the future. Third, all lovers of the world. In John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave this one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The word here is referring to all humanity. God chooses to walk through the particular to reach the general. In another way to put it, God starts small just as he called Abraham to be a blessing for many. As believers, you and I are called as the few, the one with God's love for the world. His love for the world is seen in giving up his own son. From Christ's birth to his death, Father's love has embraced his lost creation in Jesus. 
for the purpose of restoration and redemption. As we hear Jesus' prayer, we find that the Father is looking to answer his prayer with every encounter you have with one of his lost children. Ask God to help you see others as he sees them and to love as he loves. In conclusion, as we grow to enter into the eternal life held out to us today in Jesus, may we grow in our relationship with God and with one another by knowing and being known. May the giving and receiving become a joyful joyful participation in the unity of love from Father, Son, and the Spirit. How I long for that day when Jesus returns and we can hear him say, Come, inherit the kingdom I prepare for you. And we will be enjoying the fullness of eternal life without pain, sorrow, and troubles. God doesn't promise us a trouble-free life in this world, but just as Paul endured the sufferings, we will follow his advice. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 17 to 18, for our life, and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far upweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Let me end. This message today with a communion. Let us pray for the elements. Loving Jesus, our Savior, thank you for your wondrous love, for redeeming and restoring us to your death on the cross. As we partake this communion, we are reminded of how your body was broken for the forgiveness of our sins. We now belong to you by your blood we are free. Amen. Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And get his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body. This is the body of Christ that died for us. Let us eat the bread. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, did it then say, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for me for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink of the one that symbolizes the blood of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
you are enjoying your presence right now, as you continually speak to us and guide us. Thank you for the eternal life you gave through your Son, Jesus Christ. May we respond in oneness and unity to grow in our relationship with you and to participate in restoring others in Christ's kingdoms. Help us to fix our eyes on what is unseen, for we are achieving the fullness of eternal glory in Jesus with us. In whom we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, God bless you and keep you. This is Margie Vanitin, hoping to see you next week for another online worship service. Thank you.